Hello, I'm Melissa Idris. And I'm Sharad Kutin. You're watching Consider This, the show where we want you to consider and then reconsider the news of the day. Let's begin the show this evening with a new name in town, COVID-19. That's what the Wuhan novel coronavirus is now being called by the World Health Organization. The WHO today has also advised Malaysia to prepare for the possibility of wider transmission of COVID-19. To which our health ministry said the government would temper this advice with the current situation on the ground. Now the good news is that there were no new COVID-19 infections today, which leaves the number of confirmed cases in Malaysia at 18. You know, of course, with good news, uh, you know, you don't throw caution to the wind. Sure. Uh, and, you know, perhaps it's too early to celebrate the end of uh, this crisis. But is, it, is it too early to well, celebrate? Well, I mean, so we don't really know. And I think we rely on science and we rely on the researchers to tell us exactly what has been happening mm -hmm. and what can happen in the future. So there are, uh, there is, as we, we have had many crises before, we've had peaks and then we had a drop off and then perhaps a longer tail or a shorter tail depending right. on the nature of the infection rate and so on and so mm. forth but there, are, there is some good news including the fact that you know uh, um, uh, the fatality levels are very low so right. you can line up all the good stuff yes. against uh, some of the bad stuff as opposed to also things that are unknown well I, I, all of I do want to point out though you know on that note of optimism that you were talking about perhaps we are looking for a silver lining anywhere in this outbreak um, but according to China China's government senior medical advisor uh, who was famed for his work in combating the SARS crisis in 2003. He said that perhaps this outbreak is now hitting a peak in China um, and we could see a plateau and maybe it could be over by April. However, the, um, the, the thing is um, he's concerned about uh, we don't know why it's still so con contagious, and I think that's a real concern for epidemiologists at the moment. Yeah, and I think that's the you know in some ways the the wonderful thing about uh, this crisis is that we have developed a science that doesn't stop asking questions about where uh, we and where to look when mm. we look at something like a crisis like this. So people might sigh, you know, uh, heave a sigh of relief and think, okay, now I can go back to the but supermarket. Don't be complacent, right? Yeah, don't be complacent. <laughs> I mean, absolutely, that is the one thing that we shouldn't be. Well, uh, some breaking news uh, just in now. We have uh, news that Formula One Chinese Grand Prix in Shanghai has been postponed. It was initially scheduled for April 17th to the 19th. Uh, we don't know when it's, it's been rescheduled, but this is because, of course, the COVID-19 outbreak in China. All right, moving on to other news. Sarawak now has full control and autonomy over the supply, sales and distribution of natural gas within the territory. Now, this follows the signing of an agreement between Petronas and Sarawak's state-owned oil and gas company, Petroleum Sarawak, or better known as Petros. Now, the takeover was effective January 1st of this year. Yeah. And so, you know, in the handover ceremony, there were uh, things that were said, interestingly enough, that suggest that uh, uh, there's still tensions between uh, Sarawak's uh, management of uh, its uh, resources and its current uh, uh, legal uh, tussle with uh, Petronas, which is, of course, the national uh, group. Yes. So th what is interesting, I think, uh, Melissa, in the narrative, and we, we've we had this story over time, is the desire for Sarawakians to forge their own a kind of narrative when it comes to economic development, sure. right? Uh, along with all the other social um, policies that they seem to have. So th this is yet another p uh, platform, another plank in building uh, a kind of autonomy, uh, autonomy, I think, that they want, well, which must yes. be grounded in economics. Well, you know, the Sarawak government has said that, uh, well, it claims that it's missed uh, several uh, investment opportunities due to insufficient gas supply. In fact, I think uh, they, they mentioned that many investors had decided not to invest in the territory due to the uncertainties of who was authorized to make decisions on gas supply. Was it Sarawak or was it Petronas? And now, of course, that was in relation to the legal battle that you mentioned, Sherrod, or with Petronas over claims of unpaid uh, sales tax on petroleum products uh, sold uh, to Sarawak. And I think it's quite interesting because according to a, a Malaysian Insight 
news report today. At that signing, at that signing ceremony, uh, there was an undercurrent of perhaps uh, anger um, and it was reflected in comments made by the Deputy Chief Minister saying, here we talk very nicely but outside we fight. Yeah, <laughs> and also, you know, if you look more closely at Sarawak's own sort of energy plans, uh, their, their, their projects around big hydro and their projections about being able to supply uh, regional economies with uh, electricity and power mm. is quite astounding. I mean, Sarawak is now 70% renewables in terms of the, the source of its energy and also they're projecting into the future the the benefits of a big hydro mm. for them to be uh, exported to Kalimantan where the new capital for Indonesia is being built uh, uh, to the Philippines uh, to us in the peninsula but, and, but other countries as well so fascinating plans that they seem to have for themselves all right well keep a close eye on this story as it develops but in other news today according to a report by Malaysia Kini the government today agreed in principle to grant a three-year extension for Linus to run its rare earth processing plant in Gebeng, Kuantan. Now, the three-year extension for the plant's operating license will expire in March of 2023. According to a source who spoke to Malaysia Kini, the ministers Yobi Yin and uh, Lim Guan Eng had objected to the license renewal when it was brought up in the cabinet meeting today. Yeah, but because uh, so the conditions were met, and the conditions include um, transferring the plant's cracking and leaching process to another country and the construction of a permanent disposable facility. Now, the question is, uh, Pakistan had made a promise, and it's promise number 39, I believe, in the manifesto. Wow. Uh, so, so you know, in, in reneging on this promise, what, how do they reassure the public, uh, especially the public that voted for them on the basis of this promise, uh, that they haven't abandoned them and the interests of those uh, citizens who live in the area Area and feel threatened by the presence of this facility. Yeah, I, I'm just wondering what this would mean in terms of the question of optics, right, Sherrod? I mean, there's been a lot of discussion and conversation around the Linus issue, whether Pakatan Harapan uh, can afford to have, I'm sure there could be potential backlash coming up from this, uh, deci this decision or this announcement, which will probably happen um, sooner rather than later, and uh, how Pakatan Harapan will manage the communication of this. Is, is, is vitally important. Yeah, I think the MPs, uh, the, the state assembly people who are in the vicinity, perhaps who, you know, who rode on this promise might suffer, you know, next, if there's an, another election coming around soon. Uh, the question is, over time, will they be able to, uh, uh, you know, inst instill a, a level of confidence mm. in the public about the safety issues of the facility? Well, one way to do that is to be transparent into the uh, conditions that perhaps Linus has has fulfilled for the renewal of this license. If if Pakatan Harpan is transparent in, into the rationale of how it came to this decision, uh, th that's one way to mitigate any fallout in the communication of this. Yeah, but the question, of course, we'll, we'll uh, keep coming back to them, is that you made a promise based on, on, on whatever science and evidence there was, right. you know, uh, only two years ago. What has changed that will now allows you to justify this action? And I think that's going to be a tough question to answer for any uh, you know, a political representative sure. who's going now to, uh, ex uh, to kind of go to the ground to explain this U-turn. For sure. All right. We're going to take a quick break. And then after this, we'll try to put Malaysia's GDP numbers into context. So don't go away. Stay tuned to consider this.